This video is a quick practice video on encoding MIPS instructions by hand. The intent is to give you an opportunity to practice doing this encoding because it's something you'll be expected to do on the exam. So what you're going to need is your MIPS quick reference card, the University of Regina MIPS card that I put together. Uh, I've got a big one here, uh, but you should have yours ready to go. Uh, and we're going to do three instructions and that will just give you the practice. Uh, the best way to make use of this video is to follow along and then whenever I'm about to do some task, pause the video and make sure that you uh, are able to do the task and then you can resume the video to get make sure that you get the right answer. Uh, so we're going to do three instructions. The first one is going to be add immediate uh, into register T8, the value that's in register T5, and the value negative 25. So this is the instruction you want to encode, and we're going to walk through the step, the process step by step. First thing is, what's the opcode? That's always going to be the first step. What's the opcode? So we look at our sheet. Again, pause the video and check it, but we look at our sheet. Uh, this one's right at the top. Add immediate. And the opcode is 001000. That also tells us the format, which is I format. And then we can look down here and say that I format instructions are going to be the opcode, then RS, then RT then the immediate value. So we'll write all of that stuff out on our page. Uh, the opcode is for add immediate uh, 001000. Then we're going to need RS, then we're going to need RT, then we're going to need uh, the immediate field. That's what we need to find. So what's RS and RT? Well, these are going to be these two registers, uh, but don't forget, it's very frustrating, uh, they're usually in the opposite order on the the assembly code as the machine code. So the assembly code says RS and then RT. But if you look up in the uh, operation example, immediate instructions list RT first and then RS. So we're going to need T5 for RS and T8 for RT. What are those registers? T5, T5, well T0 is 8, T7 is 15, so T6 would be 14, T5 is 13. So T5 is 13, that's RS. 13 is what? It's 8, and then 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13. So it's 8, and 4, and 1, and a 0 at the front, because remember, uh, registers are 5 bits long. And then RT, RT is T8. Which one is T8? T8 is right here. T8 is register 24. Uh, so this is an important point, is that don't get confused by where T0 and T7 are. T8 is not register 16, it's register 24. Uh, again, frustrating and confusing, but that's where we are. So T8 is 24, that's RT, 24, register 24 is 16 plus 8. So it's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and then three zeros to make it a 24. Now what's the immediate value? The immediate value is negative 25. What's negative 25? Well, it's a sine extended number. So we're going to find out, first of all, what positive 25 is. Well, we just said 24 is this. So 25 is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's 25. But that doesn't look like a positive number yet, so we got to make sure that it's a negative number. And we could sine extend it all the way out to 16, but this is enough for now to, do our, to find out what the negative value is, and then we can sine extend it after this. So we're going to flip the bits and add 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, plus 1 is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. That's negative 25. Now we want to make it 16 bits worth. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Sign extended. And you'll recall, if you were to sign extend this, it's just zeros out there. Flip the bits would give us ones out there. So that's fine. So this is our entire 32 bits. Finally, we'll break it up into individual pieces. Uh, each 4-bit piece is going to represent a hex digit, and that will be our final answer. So we're going to do like this, 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 and like that. And then this first one is going to be 2, and then 0001 is 1. And then 1011, oh, that's going to be a big one. I can't remember. So let's look here. 1011, if we look at our sheet, 
one zero one one is up here. One zero one one is B. One zero one one is B. And then this one is eight. And then this is F and F. And then this is E. And then this is seven. And so that's our final number. We put a zero X in front to remind us that it's hex. And we say that's our final answer. Now, if I ask you a question to say, what's the 32-bit hex value for add immediate T85, negative 25, this is the result I would give you. If I asked a question that said, what is the value of RT for this instruction, you would need to know that RT was T8, and then you would give us uh, 24, which is 11000. So there's lots of different kinds of instructions that I can ask you, um, and different kinds of questions about those instructions, so keep that in mind as we're doing it. All right, let's do another one. So that's add immediate T8, T5, negative 25. That's great. Let's do store word, store word into register T3. Uh, the value that's at eight plus the stack pointer. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at the procedure call stuff yet or not, but the stack pointer is going to point to an area in memory called the stack and it's going to give us access to information that was set up by a previous uh, subroutine. It's a common storage area, and this is a very common way to access information that's on the stack, stack pointer, and then some offset from the stack pointer. In this case, it's eight, which is going to be two instructions or two words, because each is four bit, four bytes, two instructions or words away from the current value of the stack pointer. So we want to store whatever's in T3 into the stack pointer. So first step, always opcode, SW, SW is down here, store word, SW. It's an I format instruction, and the opcode is 101011. So it's 101011, and just like before, it's an I format instruction, so it's going to be RS, and then RT, and then the immediate field. So this is very similar to what we just did before. Now in this case, we have to remember what RS and RT are. Let's remind ourselves on the sheet for load and store instructions, load word RT, store word RT. So that RT is going to be our destination register in the register file, even though it's not really a destination because we're taking information from the register file and putting it into memory. So it's a source register, really. Uh, but for consistency, the data register for load and store instructions is always RT. And we can check that on our uh, hardware, because when we're storing information into the data memory, that information comes from RT. So this is where we're going to use for a store, uh, a store word. And then we're going to use RS and the immediate value to give us the address to store. So 101011, RS, RT, immediate. And we just said RT is going to be our data register. So that's RT is T3. And T3, if we look up in the register file, T3, T0 is 8, T1 is 9, T2 is 10, T3 is 11. So RT is 11, which is 8 and 3, like that. RS is going to be our address register, and that is going to be SP. Well, what's SP? Look in the register file. SP is the stack pointer. That's register 29. What's register 29? Well, 29 is 16. 24 is 16 and 8. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So it's 16 and 8 and 4 and 1. That's 29. All right, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So RS is 29. Then the immediate value is just 8 which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. That's 8 in 16 bits, nice and quick. So this is uh, this part is easy then. Uh, it's 8, 0, 0, 0. And you should notice for any immediate instruction, the bottom four hex bytes is in fact the number that's stored in the immediate field, right? If it's number 8, or if it's got Fs in the front, then it's going to be some negative number that you'll have to convert. Uh, if it's got zeros in the front, then the number that's stored is the number. But it is in hex. And so 9 would be 9, 10 would be A, 11 would be B, etc. 
The rest of this, we can again break it up into four bit chunks. 1011, if we don't recall, we can look here. 1011 is B again. That's B. 1010 should be A. 1010, oops, is A. And then 1111 is F, and 1010 is A. So this instruction is O, X, A, F, A, B, 0008. Will translate into store word T38SP. All right, let's do one more example just to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, we've done store word, we've done add immediate. Let's do one more example. Uh, this example will be shift right arithmetic. And it's going to be into register S6. And it's going to be register S1. And it's going to be the value. 20. So we're going to shift S1 by 20 to the right arithmetically, which means we save the sign bit uh, and replicate that sign bit across. And then we're going to get the result being put into S6. Now, interesting to note that the existing machine that we have um, and the existing hardware data path that we have doesn't actually support shifts. There's nothing on this machine that allows us to do shifts. So that's a question I can ask you is, what would you do to this machine to allow it to support shifts, right? The way that we've structured the control point values for the ALU is you can do add and subtract and load immediate and a bunch of other stuff, load up or immediate, but there's nothing in here that does shift. So we could put that in the register file. We could put that in the ALU. We could put that as a separate box here uh, that takes uh, certain values that would be used to generate the shift amount. Uh, but that's an interesting point that might be <laughs> useful to consider. So SRA, S6, S120. And one more time, we're going to check the sheet and we're going to look for the opcode. SRA is here. SRA, shift right arithmetic, is an R format instruction. Our opcode is 0 and our function code is 000011. Shift right arithmetic. Opcode is 0. Funk code is 3, and then the rest is in the middle, is going to be R, S, R, T, R, D, and the shift amount. What are those registers? Well, for shift values, uh, when we do a shift, uh, a regular R type shift, <coughs> R, D is the destination, R, T is the source, and RS is unused. Unused are usually zero. Just uh, ignore them or set them to zero. RD is going to be S6, right? Because we lift our destination, whoops, we list our destination register first, uh, but then it's got to be in RD in the instruction. So S6 is 22. S7 is 23. So S6 is 22. 22 is, so this is unused. 22 is 16. Uh, 16 and 8 is 24, so that's too many. So 16 and 4 is 20, and 2 is 22. So there's 22. Really good to practice going back and forth all of your numbers from 0 to 32. You could even memorize them. I don't. I just do the conversion. Uh, but that's important to recognize. Now, I think I've made a mistake, haven't I? Because it's R, uh, RD is S6 is 22. So in fact, this should be 22, 101, 10, and this is wrong. It's S1. RT is S1. S1 is 17. 17, which is 10001. So I often get confused. This is RD, this is RT. And in the instruction, they're flipped. So be very careful which one goes where. You will get that wrong. So again, finally, we break it up into hex bits. Uh, oh, the shift amount is 20. Uh, the shift amount is 20. It goes here. That is 16 and 4 is 20. And so that's our instruction. Uh, 1, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We split it up into pieces of four. Each piece of four is a hex bit. So it's zero X zero and then zero and then one and then one, right? Zero, this is zero, that's zero. Oh, sorry, this is zero, zero. That's one, that's one. One, zero, one, one is B again. <laughs> I just guess these things. And then uh, 0, 1, 0, 1 is 5. And 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0. And then 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3. And that's our final value for the hex bit. If I ask you to do it in the other direction, again, it's the other, it's the other way around. Same process, though. If we wanted to take one of these instructions, imagine we didn't know uh, that AFAB, this is the last thing we'll do in this video, um, A, F, A, B, O, 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 8. We just did this one, but let's imagine we didn't know what instruction this was. And the question was, what instruction is this? Well, first, we're going to convert to binary, and then we're going to look at the opcode to tell us what instruction it is, and then we will get the rest of the fields allocated. So A is, and again, we can look at our sheet to remind us, a is 1010, so it's 1010, and then uh, B is 10, oh, sorry, F is 1, do it again, 1010111111, this is A, F, A, B, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 8. So that's the binary. So again, you go from the hex to the binary. Then you take the first six bits and you say this is the opcode. 101011. Well, now we look through the opcode and we try to find it. 1010. Again, pause it, see if we can find it. We know what the answer is. We just did this. 101011. Is store word right down there one zero one zero one one store word so this is store word we know that store word is immediate format instruction which means we can look at the immediate format and say immediate format instructions RS RT and the immediate value so we're gonna split this off and say that this is one one two one two three four five one two three four five these are our uh, immediate fields and the only way we can figure that out is by interpreting or decoding the opcode first but then it's opcode and then it's going to be which register RS and then this one is RT and this value is just 8 because that's the immediate value RS is going to be the um, the address register and RT is going to be the data register so it's going to be store word into RT which is uh, 1011 11 we look here 8 9 10 11 is 8 is 0 9 is 1 10 is 2 11 is 3 T3 so this is T3 and this one is 16, 24, 28, 29. And if you look here, 29 is SP. So store word in from register T3, because again, we flip them. The value that's at 8 plus the value that's at the stack point. And so that's the opposite process, is going from the hex value, you go to the binary value, you decode the opcode, you fill in the rest of the fields, and you figure out what the actual assembly language instruction 